uh, we are just getting ready to have a lovely conversation with uh, Ramakrishna Murthy, um, one of the young, accomplished musicians of our times, who has set a fine example for those of you who are considering taking music as a full-time career. So we are just getting set with some of the lighting and the sound. So hopefully, all of you can. Uh, see and hear us clearly. So just bear with us a couple minutes. Is this a ah, way better. better? Yeah, wonderful. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, so, cool. to start off with, how many tamburas do you have? I saw quite a few of them when you changed your camera angle. I can only have two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I only have. I only have okay. two, and I have one other one for uh, that's tra- that's more travel friendly. So three. Okay. Three. Okay. Are they yeah. in different sizes though? The the one that's travel friendly. Ah, uh, actually, I can show you. Uh, so these are the two that I use uh, normally to sing with and practice with. Okay. Uh, yeah, those are the two. Wonderful. And then my travel yeah. one is a uh, is a bit smaller and a bit uh, it's less less weight, obviously. You know, the okay. cabin friendly. Right? right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So that actually gives me oh. a nice cue into the very first question I wanted to ask was. Yeah, uh, yeah. Growing up, what attracted you to Carnatic music? Uh, <laughs> so actually, I wasn't like intrinsically intrinsically into music at all. I I, I started going to class because uh, uh, you know my my parents kind of wanted me to have some cultural connect in the U.S. You know how the story goes. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think it matters. Maybe yeah, we've all felt it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, I mean, I had a strict teacher. My teacher was very demanding and very strict, and uh, my parents. I mean, especially my mom. Uh, you know, kind of sat with me and made sure I practiced uh, every day. So that was how I kind of developed an interest, just by you know, <laughs> sitting down and practicing without any other choice. Right. What about you? Uh, I'm actually curious to know about your story. Well, more or less the same, uh, though. I mean, we did have quite a bit of, uh, I would say, musical genes on my mother's side. Uh, uh-huh. so you have any musicians in the family? Uh, yes, my my grandmother. She is a self-taught musician, and then she ensured a lot of us were properly trained in music. My uncle's a violinist. Okay. My mom also sings. But then she ensured that my brother and I got formal training while we were right from our childhood. Oh, okay. So, okay, yeah, it, okay. it does run in our. Uh, I would say from my mother's side. Uh, my okay. dad's side is all uh, connoisseurs of music. They appreciate and they, you know. They attend concerts, so you need both of that. So <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for so, sure. So where, where did you grow up? Actually, you moved to Minneapolis, Chennai. Uh, Chennai. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, good. Okay. So I'm okay. proper okay. Chennai. I just grew up there. I went to school. All of that's uh-huh. there. Awesome. So awesome. with Carnatic music, uh, as a musician, how do you see yourself? What aspect of your music do you see that sets you apart? Ah, uh, uh, I mean. It's it's a tough question for me to answer, you know, because uh, uh, the thing is, when you go through your practice and you go through your learning and you go all through all your experiences and things, I mean, the thing is, nobody's really thinking. At least as far as I know, nobody's really thinking consciously. You know, I need to do something that sets me apart from everybody else. Right. You know, it's it's more of a, um, I guess, it's more of a pursuit to just do things. As best as you can, the way you're taught, and then once you get to that place where you kind you you can kind of internalize stuff on your own and start uh, you know experimenting with your own thoughts and stuff, you just, then you just follow 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 wherever your mind takes you and your intellect and your aesthetic sense takes you. You know you just follow mm-hmm. that. Uh, but again, not consciously thinking is this going to set me apart from somebody right. else. That, right. That's more for I think I think a commentary that people who actively follow your music. And listen to your music to make a judgment on. I feel. But have you heard that from, uh, let's say, people who follow your music or your fans who have said, "I think Ramakrishna Murthy's music is different in this particular way." Have you heard that either in conversation or in commentary? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the thing that uh, that people say that that uh, that makes me kind of, I guess, happy. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, I, th- I think they say that I I follow the path of the legends that came before me, and that mm-hmm. that is what I strive for myself. So right. when I hear that, um, you know, and uh, I it, it makes me feel like I'm do- I'm doing something that 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 is uh, 
how do I say it? self satisfactory i guess hmm. because that, right. that is that is because that, that that's the music that i was inspired by so when can when when somebody can uh uh recognize that by just listening to me and not necessarily knowing about my journey right it's very cool for me right so right so uh, a very uh, important aspect but also a hard aspect to grasp in carnatic music is manodharma yeah. right when we've all been introduced to it and how we grow along with it in our in our career so as to speak uh, how we grapple right. with it everybody has a different approach so right. how has your journey been with manodharma right from the time you got introduced to it have you do you have any approaches or a, a sort of mindset that that has worked for you when you have learned manodharma and the reason i ask this question is there is still no a uh, fixed path or answer for this right it's irrespective of how much uh, institutionalizing any guru can do after a certain point it's the individual artist that has to take the lead right so how yeah. has your experience yeah. been with uh, manodharma sangeetha uh actually you know what frankly i i i wanted to ask you the same question because <laughs> your manodharma is yeah, i mean though you've been classically trained obviously uh i think what you do is pretty amazing in terms of uh, adapting yourself to crossover music and things despite being classically trained because that's something that i have just started doing recently you know mm. uh so i was wanting to ask you you know how that works and how how you're able to do that so seamlessly um for me it is i would credit it mostly to the fact that i learned both uh, carnatic and western classical music at the same time oh, when i was in awesome. school okay So okay, as great. much as I made progress in Manodharma when I was a student I was also making progress with western classical music. So right, maybe simultaneously right. learning both of those genres it was almost like two like sort of music career paths when I was a full time student. Yeah so interestingly I also learned western violin when I was growing up you know in my uh, ah. you know, going with the US I was uh, I was part of my school orchestra okay uh, till the 8th grade till the 8th grade and then the eight, by the 8th grade I decided you know I should probably just pursue one thing you know the thing right. that I thought at the time you know I was better at and more interested in which was you know Indian classical Carnatic right so um uh I made that decision then but uh yeah I mean who knows what would have happened if I decided to pursue both streams simultaneously like you did I mean that's, right. that's also very beautiful I think I think it's right. amazing in the right amazing journey so so yeah. talking about uh combining different genres what was your experience when you made uh, samaja varagamana with mahesh and uh, akshay yeah you know uh, it was amazing actually uh, the whole experience needless to say but i was actually very surprised when uh, shriram uh, reached out to me because i had never seen myself doing you know something like crossover or uh, experimenting with other genres or singing with an ipad of course we all know <laughs> you know mahesh mahesh is uh, is he's a genius at what he does but uh, mm-hmm. uh i had never personally seen myself doing that but uh mm. i i think the i think the thing that i would um uh, thank myself for now in hindsight is that i kept an open mind about it right uh um yeah. so because i've been so uh so entrenched in in the classical idiom uh that was hard for me to think of myself outside of that box right right Right. So now now I now I realize that people who do that, you know, so seamlessly, it's pretty like like yourself, for example, it's pretty amazing. Um so like I said it was it was uh, it was nice when he reached out and I you know I just said why not and of course uh, Akshay is a very good friend of mine we go along with mm. that. Right. And I talked to him and he's like oh, why don't you just give it a shot and see where it goes, you know. Mm. Part of the fact that I was so comfortable because I was going to I I was with uh, Actually, in fact, that's the only condition, <laughs> kind of second stage condition that I gave Sri Ram. I said, I, I, I hope Akshay is part of this thing. Right. You know, because you know, it, it's, uh, it's just good to have. You know, when you're doing something so unfamiliar, right. at least what aspect of it you can have that's comfortable to you, then of course, then it, yeah. So, so it ended up being being uh, being being awesome, and uh, obviously, so gratified to see the response. You know? Right. 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 I never, never expected something like that. So, but cool. how? why that song though who who made that selection for that song uh we were actually running through many different uh choices and mm-hmm. we felt uh you know i had i in me myself and akshay and uh, even mahesh we were all brainstorming about what what we can do and uh, uh their input see i had like you know some kind of idea of like a few songs that that could probably work for this I, okay. maybe i can't even say that that i thought that i could uh 
stick to stick to what i learned and stick to whatever traditions that i follow and whatever right but still have you know then build upon it and and bring up something interesting mm-hmm. but uh, the thing is i think we decided to go with that song finally because uh, it, you know quite simply the universal appeal of uh, shri jagrat goswami is composition right, right. I, we were thinking about maybe something uh, some bharatiya or mm. uh, uh, some you know well known uh, anamacharya song you know like right. it's like really widely related so obviously that was huge factor also in the relatability of the composition since since you know i was new to the whole thing and right. it was a new thing we were trying out so so relatability and uh, recall you know those things play a huge part but ultimately uh, you know tyagara goswami is the ultimate so it's a good i guess it's a good beginning it's a auspicious beginning i hope right so right uh um, so since you did mention a little bit about like concerts in between i wanted to ask uh have you felt that the concert format has evolved or is evolving as you you know perform around the world and you you've performed with so many different artists do you or at least uh, you know musicians in your age group in our generation feel that the concert format is evolving uh sure i mean i think that it has evolved a lot even before we were in the scene you know mm. uh you know as i mean as many people uh maybe knowing uh the concert format was uh, developed in the early part of the 20th century by uh the great uh, path breaking uh with one uh, arivadi ramajanga right yet and uh, since then the i always uh, like to say and i've always been uh in tune with the fact that uh music is only like a microcosm of society right so as a society society's needs change uh and as society itself changes so so too does the music and the presentation of the music or presentation of art mm. right so in his time when he actually developed the concert format it was a changing it was a changing of the society at that time right before musicians uh, used to sing in the courts of uh kings and kings and queens you know right in, in royal darbar pretty much right. uh, and and uh, at that time it was just the beginning of the sabha culture Mm. you know and people people uh, and and music becoming more accessible to all uh, all you know all echelons of society right so thereby instead of singing you know just like a few compositions and just singing a huge uh, ragam taram pallavi you know for like hours on end there was more focus on the composition right, right. that is okay. that is that is the, that is that is that is what that is the contribution of uh, ayanga arwal that that really stands out you know the, mm. the inclusion of many many genres of compositions and the brilliant way in which they were placed with one another juxtaposed with one another right that it gave give audiences uh, uh, a a wide variety right mm. now since then the concert duration you know up till up till now from his time to up till now the concert duration has shrunk a lot right right has shrunk a lot we have uh, so so thereby the concert format has also changed in that time there have been many other uh, composers who have uh, you know contributed with their brilliant work so those are also included right you know so so the uh, the concert format has as as has gone a very organic change i would say from mm. that time to now uh, right. and and it will continue to evolve it will continue to evolve you know right but how i should you... also say you know this is a this is a seminal moment because right. uh society is undergoing a change that is that i mean most of us don't even know how to react to what's going on right now so that will ultimately reflect in the music uh uh sometime or you know sooner than so- sooner or later it will right right but in 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 your concerts have you seen any of the has there been requests or feedback for different formats uh i mean i i'm not sure if i can recollect anything specific um but uh I I don't think I have done anything per se that that has not already had a precedent. Mm, okay. Like like for example the late K V Narayan Swami used to begin his concert with the Varnam. Mm. Then in the middle of the concert he used to sing uh, Kapi Ragam and sing Sumasai mm. which is a Pada Varnam. So Oh wow. Okay. Uh, so so I have done something like that, you know. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, How has the audience again, reacted to that? I mean with regards to that particular piece I mean I'm not sure whether people I mean 
really knew whether it was actually a varnam or not a varnam right right so i mean i'm not i don't really know i mean uh, and and there again see most of the people who are actually even clued in probably knew that uh, kv narayan swami did something like that before so it's right. probably it's not probably not so noticeable or not so uh, uh, you know avant garde i guess you know right right yes. how do you so, keep yourself motivated as a musician what sort of pushes you to say i should do better than the last concert i sang or I this year's that. december season should be more powerful like what sort of goals do you keep for yourself <laughs> usually the recording of the last part that helps me enough <laughs> <laughs> what do you I'm look a, for I'm when a... you when you listen to your recordings you know it's it's as a, as an artist uh, i'm sure you'll you know you would have felt this that it's always a little bit weird and embarrassing to hear your own songs uh i yeah, hope you felt it, that way because you're constantly thinking yeah. in terms of where is the next mistake i've made how do i ensure that yeah. it's not happening so yeah. what do you look for like when you listen to your concert uh, recordings uh <laughs> so many things i mean uh uh there's the, there's a the compositional integrity uh, first of all mm. uh there's the, there's a flow in the manodharma which is actually kind of i mean i don't know if you can say it it's like a mystic it's manodharmam like you like you rightly said it's it's very difficult to be taught and practiced in a regimented way it's very it's in almost impossible to do that so with regard to singing in, uh, you know the imaginative part of a concert and things it's really kind of you know what you have that day what what comes out that day it's a very abstract thing you know some days right. you might be in a great mood and you might produce some inspired music some days not so much so right 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 uh, uh, but i always feel like my critique of myself is uh is one thing and another person's critique of myself is a different thing right but do you so, look for I, different things when in different critiques you mean from other people or myself uh-huh. from other people from, from others yeah i mean see the thing is no matter how much we try to play humble and things like that we all have an ego right so it's yes. difficult to listen to criticism from anybody but uh but taking that into account uh you know even if something stinks first it's important to kind of let it let it sit for some time mm. and uh, and and try to revisit it as soon as possible and to see whether there's actually some substance in the criticism right right uh because there could be you know and 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 i also will say that you know there is some criticism that's not really coming from the right place it's, you know it mm. could be aimed at you it could be personal it could whatever that is that's fine right. that's fine right. once you look at that later and you're able to distinguish what kind of criticism it is right right uh, then you know you have to really look at it honestly you know from a non emotional point of view and right. and and really really think whether whether it's uh, i mean whether it makes sense to ruminate on it and try to do better or make the necessary changes and improvements or whatever right. or just to you know just leave it aside you know this it's okay i mean some people will say stuff it's okay i mean as a as a public performer you will you will say uh, right. a lot of things right and let me say this is not just about music either you can get comments about anything right have you right? gotten I mean, comments outside of your music yeah. Okay. yeah of course of course both publicly and privately directly mm. indirectly all those things all criticism is to be you know it always hurts no matter what it is mm. it always hurts even if it's something trivial it still hurts right right, right? but uh, but um, you you have to kind of uh, give it that space and not take it too much to heart and kind of try your best to look at it objectively and see if there's some sense in it that's the only way you can really improve because you might be critiquing your critiquing yourself in a different way right but even an unfair perspective is a different perspective and right. it's worth thinking about right so right so amidst all of this criticism how do you who are your inspirations are there artists or legends that you look up to saying this is how you know they improve themselves this is how they worked on themselves this is how they made a name or this is how they took criticism do you have like i i don't want to use the word role model because yeah. you know you are at a point where every musician is trying to uh, create a niche for themselves so it's it's i would say yeah. it's beyond a point but we still have those legends or even artists who are alive today i'm not necessarily the ones who are, who are gone way past our time uh, right you know are, are there uh, artists that you have always looked up to uh, right i mean obviously for anybody i think the teachers uh, gurus 
right. huge influence. Uh, uh, but I mean that that obviously goes without saying, right? I mean right. you are obviously spending the most time with them, so they are the right. greatest influences on you. Uh, but other than that, uh, yes, I can uh, list some names. Purely musically speaking, I can list so many names. Starting with, uh, you know, Shyamu Gurishino Asayar, who is mm-hmm. my ultimate uh, uh, role model in music and many many aspects of life. Also, you know, I've read so many of his biographies and heard so many anecdotes from so many people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so starting with him, yes, many many with K V Narayana Swami as I mentioned, Ari Kuli Ramanu Jayengar. Right. Ram Nath Krishnan, M.D. Ramanathan, G.N. Balasubramaniam, Madhur Maniyar, then the list, all of the list, the list goes on and on and on. And right. On. Uh, but uh, I'm also a huge fan of uh, of uh, <laughs> basketball, and <laughs> I've uh, grown up grown up watching these, watching so many of these players. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I'm from I'm from Los Angeles or the Greater LA area, and okay. I grew up during the, during the Kobe Bryant years. Oh, okay. So, so his, uh, I mean, God rest his soul, but. Uh, uh his work ethic um uh, and uh, those things have have really stuck with me so i i those those are my you know main inspiration okay uh what about you what about you man my inspiration well obviously like you said our gurus definitely so my yeah, teachers yeah. just for how they've dedicated their life for music sure, that is yeah. very inspiring uh i don't know yeah. if i'll ever you know reach that level of uh uh let's say making music my mission so that was one of the things that my teacher said you know when i learned mm-hmm. from uh, when i when i went to meet uh, seshu gopalan sir for the first time i have learned okay. from him for a long time but this was i think when i was in 8th grade or something so i went and met okay. him and and he said one of the first questions he asked is uh, do you see music being part of your your entire life whether uh-huh. you make it whether you make it as a world class musician or whether you make it whether you went take music full time as a career mm-hmm. do you see it becoming a part of your life right. if not then uh, you're wasting your time here <laughs> okay so i was yeah. i was in 8th grade and like this little young uh, kid who you was desperate to impress such uh, a towering right. musician like tn sir yeah, yeah. and he of asked course. me this question right so I, i i realized how serious he was about like right. i just yeah. wanted yeah. to show up to my class and yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. for the sake of it right absolutely so, absolutely that was one of the most uh, uh, what do you say the most intense sort of statement somebody ever threw at me about music saying so that's very interesting the, because because uh, in 8th grade or 8th standard or whatever uh, asking such a question is a tough one to answer and even grapple with but at the same time an 8th grader is at that age where that question sticks right and right. and it really, really leaves you thinking Like even if you are not equipped enough you know emotionally or mentally or intellectually to handle it right. yet right. it still sticks with you so yeah that's that's amazing that's amazing yeah so that's been one of the most uh, hard hitting statements that i'm always asking myself every day like how do i make sure that music plays an integral part of my life right so that's what's right. brought me all this all these places right. and there right. are other musical legends outside of carnatic music that i grew up with yeah oh one. yes needless okay. to say and right. uh, yani i grew up with his music hmm. and yeah for the most part i think more than attending concerts i spend a lot of time just sitting in class okay uh, so yeah uh, you know i would say That's my amazing. teachers have been uh, not to say that the other artists or other legends are, are no less but it's just that of I, course I, of course of course i i i never felt that i got enough of any of my teachers so right 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 So how long were you with Sheshukalam sir? For about eight to oh no no maybe more than that. I learned till about ninety eight to about two thousand seven. Right, it's so almost a decade. Wow. Right. That's awesome. And even you know, like you said, even sitting in class, I mean, uh, his students. I mean, how many students must have passed through, passed through those doors and sat with him and sang with him and to be uh, you know listening to that, I think is right. uh, amazing. Also, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. just the sheer number of people who came and also the way it probably might have been the same for you i don't know but uh, when sir used to te- uh, teach classes like we used to have classes four days a week right and he would say oh okay fine just come at 6 o'clock and then 6 to 7 mm-hmm. is like a junior class would revise your varnams then 7 <laughs> to 8 is like another like another junior class where you learn the 
uh, smaller kritis right and then 8 to 9 was my class where other students in my class and i we were at the level where we were exploring let's say mano dharma yeah. he would yeah. teach us okay in in rupaka talam how will you sing uh, korva in things like that right and then he would oh, sing wow. this elaborate korva and then he'd stare at you saying oh <laughs> you can't sing this so that's when you're like whoa okay his expectation was so <laughs> high right and yeah, but that's how yeah. he sort yeah. of inspired us saying like you should you should be 10 steps ahead of where you think your level is right Yeah, and then yeah, you would yeah. be like at at nine o'clock, all of the senior students, you know, his son would come and join us. And then occasionally we used to have some of his performing students, like uh, hey. Gay Gayatri Girish and uh, uh, I forget the other person's name. Uh, during the uh, uh, the December season, we used to have uh, Madhuri Sundar, who's my current teacher now. So right, right, right. They right, right, all right, used right. to come and Kasturi Rangan sir. So they all used to oh, show yeah. for class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in the late evenings right so they used to just come by around 9 o'clock and they'll sing till about 10:45 11 in the evening that is amazing that like is amazing. into the night so as a young student you're sitting there from 6 pm all the way till 11 o'clock mm four days a week right that so that's amazing that's amazing for like 8 9 years that's solid training you can't ignore yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 right? and so the undoubtedly yeah so this 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 is one story that i've shared with so many people is that if i look back and see that's the biggest impact that has has you know and all of this you have to practice outside of this too right oh, class time doesn't yeah so, so yeah. class class time doesn't count so it has to be like where is your practice outside of class time yeah so yeah. that's already yeah. uh, you know 20 hours just sitting in front of your teacher yeah. and learning different types of uh, but it was so inspiring to see you you always constantly felt challenged because you don't know okay this this week what uh, ragam is he going to make a sing or or which yeah. kriti we are going to try manodharmam and so it was like a weekly exam school exams didn't bother yeah. me anymore after that i was like oh my god <laughs> i prepared for this <laughs> yeah so that was a bigger challenge but that paid yeah. off right? Of, so, right of course of course speaking of sesho gopal sir i mean there was a phase in my uh, i mean one of my gurus mm-hmm. uh, delhi sundar rajan sir was a very very frequent uh, Violin accompanies for Sesha Gopal and sir. Yes, yes. Right. So he used to tell me so much about you know their journeys together and their uh, right. musical experiences and all the legendary concerts. Of course. And there was there was a phase in my own musical uh, journey for about uh, three two three years. I literally did not listen to anybody else. Right. Little literally nobody else. Right. Uh, and and I think 2008 he came he came and sang in LA with. Uh, You must be knowing Jay Shankar Balan, sir. Right? Oh, Jay Shankar uh, Balan is my uncle. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, I, oh my God. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, I didn't know that. Right. Uh, we had him and uh, Doris sir on the middle of Guru Balan oh. Doris sir on the middle. Yeah, that's still concert is still uh, in you know in memory. Uh, he sang right. Oh Jagadamba and he sang uh, Bhagi Shri Pallavi and so many other things. And I my my dad said you know took took him up to him. After the concert, uh, and and said in Tamil, you know, my my son is a die-hard fan, mm-hmm. and uh, I I couldn't I couldn't really speak anything. I was just I was just looking at him in in awe, you know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I've I've stood just standing there frozen every week in class, not knowing what to speak. <laughs> I I have no clue what to say to him. Even today, if I go right. there, I'm just like, can I just sit in your, like you know, just sit next to you and hear you sing, you know? So it's like that. Yeah, yeah. So I totally. Yeah. I can I can relate to your your sort of fanboy moment when you stood in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was amazing. Okay. I have another question for you. Yeah. Uh, speaking of concerts and and artists, are there some of your favorite kritis that you always go back and listen to? Ah, uh, I think it keeps changing from time to time. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. But your recent uh, favorites, something that has been in your playlist, let's say for the last year or so. Ah, uh, that's that's a tough one. Uh, Or ragams, if if not compositions. Yeah, see, I mean, I like to say that. Uh, I mean, Chagrada Swami and the Trinity keep kind of like pulling me back when I kind of go outside and try to listen to other, uh, you know, other other brilliant masterpieces by other composers. Mm-hmm. But I somehow keep getting pulled back to those three, you know. So. Right. It's it's very hard to uh, you know zero in on particular compositions, but I can I can this is the best I can do actually. Right. Uh, it, it, the other things, the more specific things like ragam or kriti, they just keep changing too often for me to 
pinpoint something. Mm. Right? But, but I think in general, I, I enjoy singing the Ghanaragam a lot. The Ghanaragam. Like right. Tori Bhagavi, uh, Shankarabhanam Kalyani Kambodhi. Right. So, right. And other Rakti and the other Rakti Ragas. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, I have a question that many people have asked, not just me, but also other artists that we have featured on these type of conversations is, do you have any practice tips on how people can, um, you know, get better at Manodharma? What sort of practice can they do uh, to get better at Manodharma? <laughs> so I'm going to uh, warn you that my answer might be a little anticlimactic. Oh, that's fine. But I, I'm, everybody has their sort of secret practice that works for them, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here goes. Um, actually, the best thing to improve your Manodharma is actually... I find this is just my 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 experience uh, is to focus on the basics really. Mm. You know, starting from, starting from the alankaras to be sung in uh, different uh, you know mela katha ragam mm. uh, in in uh, three speeds or four if you can manage right. in both swaram and akaram. Akaram. Right. Okay. So it improves your uh, vocal felicity. Right. Um, and uh, and after that to practice Varnams with the same rigor. Because Varnams mm. really give you that, that grounding in Gamakas. Right. Uh, right. Right. So, so Varnams and again, two speeds uh, mm. and, you know, Swaram, uh, not, not necessarily Swaram, but Sahityam and right. Akaram. Right. Uh, and, and I think the most important fundamental thing that I have actually, uh, it has taken me a long time to learn and put into practice is to keep your mouth open, you know, mm, because, right. that act, because, act, because when you start singing in the various vocal registers, your voice adjusts itself accordingly if you keep your mouth open, right, right, you know, right. and not to constrict the sound, uh, right, um, so as, as you, as I, I, I just recently uh, was told a, such, a, such a beautiful example for this, the late mm. uh, T. Brinda, Mahavidushi T. Brinda, uh, apparently used to say, that you know when you're singing singing in the bass octaves it 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 should be very wide and like like almost like she gave the metaphor of a temple gopuram right oh, it's very okay. wide it is very wide at the bottom right and as you go up uh, you know higher up and higher up it should it should kind of apex like this so when you're singing in the upper registers it should be very mellifluous and kind of uh, and and the sound should be adjusted accordingly, you know. Right. So that reaches a beautiful climax at, at your highest register. Right. right. So that is something that I felt was very beautiful. I think it's right. very important to pay attention to those very basic and fundamental things. Okay. And this ultimately helps in your Manodharma. Mm. Right. So to answer the question, Manodharma basically, you can kind of boil it down, you can kind of boil it down to various aspects of exploring a raga. That's basically what you're doing, right? In in, right. in Alapana and Swaram and Naraval and Tanam and Pallavi singing and everything and Virutam singing. Everything is just really an exploration of the ragas in different right. ways, right? Right. So the way you increase your understanding of the raga, right, is by going through the varnams and the compositions of the great masters. Right. And you increase your repertoire and you increase your repertoire and you and you go very deep into it and internalize the composition and you and you'll realize Actually, whatever Manodharma you're singing is already existent in the Varnas and Krutis. It's, right. kind of, it's just how you kind of give your own individual touch to it right. by packaging it in a, in, a, in a certain way. That's all it is actually. The content, so to speak, is, is rarely, rarely original. Right. So that brings to my next question about Viritam, yeah. since you mentioned that. Oh, okay. How do you approach Viritams? Like, how do you select your Sahityams? How do you select your Ragams? Can you give us an example? Can you maybe sing one or two lines or something and just tell us how you construct that? Uh, so how I select Virutam, um, uh, well, there's two things. Usually, you, I mostly end up singing, like 90% of the time, I mostly end up singing shlokas and Virutam that I have heard sung by the great legend. Mm. Right? And I kind of uh, search, search for those particular verses you know, it helps that I have a father who is kind of religiously and spiritually inclined. So most of those verses, uh, I can, I can, you know, I can, I can, I can get from him. Especially Tamil, uh, right. you know, he's he's also uh, 
quite proficient and uh, very passionate about Tamil. So usually the Tamil lyrics I can kind of ask him and uh, uh, confer with him about about you know the meaning and the word splitting and things like right. that. Right. It's actually the most important thing about Vincent Singh. It's really an emotional exercise, you know, because you know, uh, leaving aside the you know the bhakti aspect of it or the the aspect of the Godhead. Right. Uh, right. I've always said that that bhakti is actually it's just another emotion of mm. feeling very strongly towards something, and that something yeah. could be anything. Right. It doesn't necessarily need to be a Godhead. Right. right. So uh, even in these in these verses. uh you know by the great philosopher by the great philosophers and the great seers that uh, our nation has been blessed with you know the bha- the, the 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 whole ethos of of bharat right. that has been blessed with so many great souls who have you know given their works you know so our object in singing these works is to just convey that emotion pretty much mm-hmm. right? right and you can and you can think about think of it more abstractly than just thinking about you know you know a devotee praising a god Right. That's what I that's what I I think of it as, you know. Right. So with regard to actually technically singing it, I think the most important thing is to have internalized the raga, like I said before. Mm. One thing, the the raga that you use to uh, explore the explore the lyric. Right. Right. You. I mean, it calls for a very uh, good internalization of that raga. Right. And finally, a very good internalization of the sahitya. Now, if you ask me for the word-by-word word meaning of every single guruta I sing or everything, every single slo- shloka I sing, probably right. can't give you a good answer. But to, you have to be able to capture the emotion of that uh, right. thing in a nutshell. Right. Right. So, for example, Jana ti Rama tava nama ruchin Mahesha. Only, only Mahesha knows the true ruchi or the true beauty of doing Rama nama. right how would this you say that if you were to perform that in a in a concert can you think of see, an I mean, example I mean, see, right i mean you can i mean uh, the ragas uh, extend themselves for expressing a multitude of emotions like that's the beauty of our whole system is that we don't have to type cast a certain raga for a certain emotion right right right, right. so mm, Um, um, oh, and before I sing, let, let me also say that aside from actually knowing the meaning of the lyrics, the most important thing is to know the long syllables and the short syllables and differentiate okay. between the three right. words. Right. right. So, ja, ja, na, ti, ti is right. a short one. Ja, right. na are both long ones. So, generally, it's understood that you can actually only elongate the longer syllables. Right. So I would say, Dana Tira Ma. That Ma has to be short. Right. Dana Tira Ma. Tava Na Ma Ruchin Ma He Sa. Dana Tira Ma. You see, there's no, there's no elaboration. Or there's no. uh karve as we say on right. the syllable t right or the syllable ma in rama because it's a short so right. this i would say technically is the most important thing to keep in mind you know meaning and all that aside and raga understanding aside this i would say is the most important facet of singing a virtam it's no which syllables you can extend and which you can't extend and which you can't right okay right yeah so Do i kind of spoke a lot but thank you i got to the point <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, relate to ragas emotionally like do you have your own sort of this raga brings out this emotion for me and it may not necessarily align with what uh, the literature necessarily talks about right undoubtedly 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 that's why there's so much emotion in raga thing which is purely like you know actually tadarina they don't have any meaning on their own the syllables that right. they use when you think raga but there is yet so much emotional content in it right that i have to do with i think uh sometimes it could have to do with the conditioning of the listener like we somehow we say that uh, you know mukhari or sahana is uh, very apt for karunya rasa which is like compassion or uh, you know things like that uh, so naturally when we when we 
seeing it those emotions tend could could tend to be evoked mm. but at the same time i would like to say that there are counter examples for this right so i mean tyagaraj swami has composed karubaru monumental composition in that in that in right. mukhari rag right. which is actually a very happy song actually it is it is a commentary about how people how people were so happy under yes, the yes. rule of rama in ayodhya right. so that is not really something that is like you know sad or brooding or something no right it's even a counter example of you know what raga can mean but right. uh, yeah i think it's i think it's just the way you perceive it you know mm. and your state of mind when you're actually uh uh when you're listening to something right right, right. are there other genres of music that you listen to uh i mean i i, I love hindustani but okay. i don't know if you can see that's not that's not too different from right. carnatic i mean the overall emphasis on the concept of raga is pretty much the same so right but outside uh, of that other foreign genres maybe like jazz pop uh, i i i i would have to honestly say i don't speak it out on my own but mm. in, but i do i do uh, appreciate it all you know when i do happen to listen to it i do like jazz i think the improvisational aspect of jazz is quite spectacular right uh, and and the thing i feel is you can really feel it when you're listening to any sort of music that really that really is is uh how do, how do you say it um meaningful because mm. because everyone is a human at the end of the day and and basically music is a medium to relate to people's emotions so i always feel like you don't need to know the technicalities of carnatic music to appreciate it so right. it's the same for me as other genres of music because i don't know the technicalities behind it but i feel something when i listen to it and when, when i can that like i feel maybe i not i might not be able to say that something is bad but i can certainly feel it when something is good right. you know right so i i yeah so i do enjoy a western classical obviously uh, orchestral music right uh, i think yeah with i mean i i don't know much obviously like i said right. but i think it's very beautiful the harmony is very beautiful okay Um so this is my final question to you before you sing something for us. Oh okay. Um apart from the pandemic of course the covid-19 situation has made music universally very difficult. Uh but outside yeah. of that where do you see the future of carnatic music in terms of performances and and the kind of content that artists um uh, uh think that the audience will recognize and appreciate. Okay. So with your permission I would like to just make a small change in that uh question. Yeah, yeah. I think it's made performance very difficult and I think mm. it's made I don't think it has any change in making music. Okay. Fair enough. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh but uh, even performance is uh it's not so difficult to you know to present yourself before an audience because we have technology and we have you know the we live in the digital age, right? Right. even that is actually per se not so difficult but uh, but the thing is are we doing something with the medium that we have that is more meaningful than what we would do if we were just live and by that i mean like is there any kind of pattern that we can present online which is obviously the medium available to all of us you know in the right. midst of not being able to perform live right so i think maybe we can ask ourselves that question more intently and try to uh focus on somehow answering those i guess you know because obviously the experience that somebody somebody gets when listening to live music is very different from what you get from listening digitally right right right, right of course so so since so so can we capitalize on that difference can we make that experience uh different from the live experience but at the same time as worthwhile as it would be if it were live right. that's the that's the question i think that we can grapple with more and uh Right. Uh, you know as uh, depending on how the situation changes uh we'll probably you know find something soon right. so I'm sure people are already thinking about this and doing something on their own you know so that's yeah that's what right. I think right. lovely answer we'd like <laughs> to uh, hear something from you because there are a lot of comments who have been like can you please ask him to saying you guys are talking too much <laughs> which uh, i understand too you know because they obviously yeah, are saying i don't i don't, I don't want to i don't okay, want thanks. them I to thanks. leave yeah. disappointed so okay uh let's see um mm.
heard you before or you know they i'm sure they have recognized the 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 flow in in your voice that's really what captivates a lot of us so this has been thank you can we are you saying oh okay uh wait my okay i have to find a shruti on my computer is this is this okay for you I, can you hear my shruti this is my uh, shruti box no i'll pull up something yeah that's fine okay okay cool mm-hmm. youtube is my default shruti box when my phone is not around so can i request you for something well uh since you did i was thinking of one of uh, ambuj and krishna's because it was her birthday recently oh, i've been listening okay. to a lot of ambuj and krishna songs is that okay but yeah, yeah of course of course of course i say i was going to request you for something that non carnatic or you jo <laughs> okay no problem no problem no problem I'm going to put on this bond yeah, yeah sure that is quite uh, yeah awesome no problem no problem ni poi arait vaadi sakhe ye ni poi arait vaadi sakhe ye நீலமேக சியாமலனை என்று நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி சகியே நீலமேக சியாமலனை என்று நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி நினைந்து நினைந்து நெஞ்சம் நினைந்து நினைந்து நெஞ்சம் புண்ணாகதே நினைந்து நினைந்து நெஞ்சம் 
புன்னாகதேனிதிவிதல்லவென்று நேரிடே சொல்லியவே நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி சகியே நிலமேக சாமணி என்று நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி நீராடும் கரை தனில் நித்தமும் வந்தனை நீராடும் கரை தனில் நித்தமும் வந்தனை நெருங்கி பேசியது நினைவுதான் இல்லையோ நெருங்கி பேசியது நினைவுதான் இல்லையோ கணமும் பிரியன் என்று கைமேலடித்ததை கணமும் பிரியன் என்று கைமேலடித்ததை கண்ணனிடும் சொல்லி கடைகள் வருகவே நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி சகியே நிலமேக சாமலனி என்று நீ போய் அழைத்து வாடி சகியே ஒரு <laughs> 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 He has, a, he has done many, I think, uh, there's one in Kannada also, Marie Amy Kavala, that's in Telugu, yes, that one is right, Telugu. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, but he's one of the artists that has contributed so much to Ambujan Krishna's... Uh, right. Right. So, so, anyway, that's so beautiful. Thank you. You're most welcome. But uh, yes, on, I would say on behalf of Indian Raga, thank you so much for joining us in oh, this conversation. Uh, it's wonderful that you are able to share all of these aspects, which we otherwise don't get to hear from artists, right? So what... it's not just a journey but also how do you look at things like manodharmam and viratham and like how do you relate to artists who, you know which sort of legends are your your sort of uh, inspirations and why they are right yeah. so this gives a lot of uh, uh, what do you say a lot of pathway and a sort of guidance for the young musicians today which is what we repeatedly keep getting asked when when we meet so many of these uh, upcoming artists through the different programs at indian raga is that these mm-hmm. are questions mm-hmm. that that are not uh, for because there's so much to be learned from the art form itself that we don't tend to focus on these things and they form an important aspect yeah. of how a musician is made and how they grow right so oh, i think this yeah. has been really helpful for us and uh, so it was wonderful to hear all of these thoughts uh, from you My pleasure. Sure. Thank you. I wish we had time for me to throw some of those questions back at you. <laughs> I just, <laughs> well, I, I we, should do a, we should do a part two then. So then definitely. Yeah, we, we definitely do it. And then maybe yes, they'll give us yes. an opportunity to take questions from the audience also. So I'm sure they'll oh, have yes, some very specific questions. So That for those true. of you who are joining us, uh, Instagram is being very mean. It's going to kick us out in a minute. So I just don't want to get cut <laughs> uh, <laughs> abruptly. But I want to say thank you, Ramakrishna Murthy, for joining thank us. You, thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the audience who've joined us. And, uh, you know, please feel free to leave your comments and uh, let us know uh, what other artists and if you'd like uh, additional questions so we can schedule more sessions like this with Ramakrishna Murthy and other artists that we have. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll Great. see you thank soon. Thank you. Thank you.
Stay take safe care. and yeah, take care. Take care. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.